Okay, so we are now on the discussion about the 15 essential email etiquette rules. So as a police officer, you should also be guided with this email etiquette rules whenever you open or whenever you send an email. So the first one is you need to use a direct subject line. So just like on this example on your right, so that is an example of a subject of an email. So all staff's mandatory corona update and it's an update about the COVID-19 virus. So whenever we um, compose a subject line, it should be brief, it should be descriptive, and whenever possible, it should be action-oriented. So you have to choose a subject line that will let the receiver know you're addressing their business issues or other concerns. And when sending email, it's crucial to use a clear subject line as it often determines whether people would open your email. So we have to make sure that it's not vague. And you all know that by having a clear and direct subject line, we can grab the recipient's attention. And it should already convey a specific information and indicate that you're addressing their concern. No, so it's like if you have this well-crafted subject line, it's like the first impression of your email, influencing whether it gets noticed and prompting the recipient to open and engage with the content. The second... Alright, so the uh, second one is you have to use a professional email address. You should always use the email address your company has provided for you. This instantly makes you more credible and improves email deliverability substantially. So if you are part of an organization or company, you should always use the email address your company or organization has provided for you. So um, in case that if you want to use your private email address, can do that especially if you're a freelancer or you just prefer to use it you should be careful when selecting uh, your handle or when using this one because if you're going to use the uh, company email address or the organization email address that would make you look credible and the third one is that the reply all button should be used sparingly Avoid hitting reply all unless you know everyone included on the list really needs to receive the reply. You have to make wise use of CC and BCC in email to avoid conversational clatter. So we all know that nobody likes to open or read emails that have nothing to do with them, their department or their individual responsibilities. So ignoring unrelated emails can be hard but we should take note that repetitive alerts can be irritating if we're trying to focus on other tasks. So avoid hitting reply all unless you know everyone included on the list really needs to receive the reply. And we have right here the difference between a BCC, which means blind carbon copy. And when we say CC, that is carbon copy. So when say BCC, you would see this portion on the email. So it sends to multiple email addresses without showing the recipient's name. So it simplifies the look of the email, whereas for carbon copy, it is also referred to as courtesy copy and it allows to send to multiple email addresses. And it allows recipients to stay informed. And
and we have the fifth one so we have or you should use professional greetings so be careful when using casual greetings such as hey there or hi everyone you have to make sure you know what sort of audience you're addressing so if it is formal your greetings must be formal so it's important to learn how to use professional greetings when it comes to email etiquette and we have right here the sixth one be wary of excessive exclamation points be careful to limit them when expressing your enthusiasm or excitement this may make the writer sound overly eager or even immature so if you're in a habit of using exclamation points be careful to limit when expressing your enthusiasm or excitement so do not overuse the punctuation marks and the seventh one, be careful when using humor. Without the corresponding facial expressions or tone of voice, any humor used over email can easily get lost in translation. So it is better to rather leave all forms of humor off professional email exchanges. So just like on this example on your right, so I think it's very unnecessary if you're going to, to add humor onto this type of email. So, something you find personally funny may not be remotely amusing to someone else. So, somehow, you more can even seem rude or hurtful. So, as much as possible, you have to be careful when you use you more in an email. And for number eight, you have to reply to all your emails. So, the... We all know that this one, it's hard to answer every email you receive, but it's good email etiquette to at least try, especially if it needs action, if it needs your uh, response about certain matter. So the example on the right, this is the button that you're going to, to select whenever you would try to respond to an email. So here, this includes emails that were sent to you accidentally. So a reply is not mandatory, but it's always good. So we can say that this is one of a good email etiquette. Next one is number nine. So you always have to proofread before pressing send. So when you say proofreading, that involves you have to check the spelling, the punctuation, the formatting, the accuracy. So don't depend solely on your standard spell checker. You know it's available online but it's better that you proofread it yourself no repeated mistakes and misspellings can look sloppy so you have to also um, do your proofreading before you send your email tenth is you have to add the email address after you've composed the message um, it is good practice to type out your email first just like on this portion on your right side so you have to write your email first then you have to add the email address of the recipient when you are ready to send the message so if you want to avoid accidentally sending an email before you finish typing and proofreading the message it is a good practice that you should type out your email first then later on once you were um, you have already composed everything that's the time that you're going to put the email address of the recipient and 11th would be double check the recipient addresses okay so do your best to be accurate and pay particular attention when you type a name from your contact contact list on the to line yeah so just like on this example it's unfortunately very easy to choose the wrong name which can be embarrassing for you so do your best to pay particular attention when you already done composing the email try to take note of the recipient's email address you have to double check uh, before sending email so it encourages accuracy especially when selecting names from your contact list so you have to be cautious on that one Next, for number 12, always consider how cultural differences may affect your communication. So it's a good idea to customize your message to the cultural context of your chosen recipient. Remember, there will likely be time zone differences you need to take into account as well. And send your email at an appropriate time. So 
it's very um it's a good idea if you are going to customize your message so you have to take a look on the uh, the culture of the person so we have to also remember that there will be likely time zone differences you need to take into account as well and send your email at an appropriate time and you have to be careful on this one because it might lead to miscommunication and next is you have to keep your fonts simple and classic 11 point or 12 point font size and easy to read sans serif such as calibre helvetica or arial so these are the common font size and font style and black is the safest and easiest to read choice as far as color is concerned so every font has its own place and time but when it comes to police report uh, we are using black mostly use black when it's when it comes to correspondence and the most important rule of thumb is that your message must be easy to read so it would be better if you could um, do this font size and font style whenever you would create a report or whenever you would send an email to someone and for the 14th you have to segment your communication so it's one of the best way to personalize your communication and a segment feature is absolutely something that should come with an email marketing if you're into it if you're a virtual assistant if you're a freelancer but for police parlance or it's useful also for police organization because that's your way on categorizing the email that you receive and also segmenting your email list makes it easier for you to target your campaigns based on your customer groups so this is an example on how segmentation is done on a gmail so it's like you're filtering you're grouping um, specific individuals or a group of people and the last one is you have to consider your tone your writing tone might be easy to misunderstand without the perspective one may get from hearing your voice if you want positive results remember your basic manners say please and thank you and try not to use words that are overly negative or dramatic so just like on this example so it's better if you could use um, polite words and we all know that before you sending uh, before you send your email you have to read it out loud prior to sending so that um, you would know if it sounds negative or rude so if you want positive results on your email that it's better if you could put kindly or thank you because that would sound polite and it avoid any unintended negativity and also aside from knowing those 15 essential um, email etiquette rules we have also this 10 essential sms etiquette rules so it's very important that we know what is sms so sms that is short message service so with the rise of mobile communications in the late 1980s and early 1990s cell phone producers along with cellular providers look into adding messaging features so it's another way of communicating to another person and right now sms is very important whenever the police would do operation they do it on their daily task so it's very helpful that we have right now this sms and we have right here the first one do reply promptly so whenever you receive a text try to respond in a prompt fashion especially if it needs your response while acknowledging the expectation for a quick responses it is also emphasized that individuals are not obligated to be constantly available on their devices so the advice um, encourages acknowledging the appropriate timing for replies suggesting that if it's not suitable to respond immediately it's acceptable to wait and reply later and the second one is don't text during inappropriate moments of course if there's a meeting so please listen to the speaker 
So you have to pay your attention on your um, surrounding. And we are know that on this one, texting during public gatherings can be considered rude, insensitive, and annoying somehow. So I think it's very, I believe it's very inappropriate if you would make a phone call while in a meeting. So if you simply cannot wait, you have to excuse yourself from the from the meeting or any public gatherings and text outside where you won't disturb others. And we have right here the third one, do keep text short. And you have to be uh, brief on this one. You have to relay your information accurately. And if you have a lot to say, you have to uh, break up the message into several texts. So it's easier for the receiver to read. And also for the f fourth one, don't text sensitive news. So if it is something that needs to be talked in person, don't send it over text. It's better that you're going to talk it out um, during face-to-face -face interaction. And messages with emotional content are better delivered by, I mean, in person. So just like on this text, uh, just like on this example. So on your right, so this is um, a sensitive one. So it's better if it would be talked about in person. And we have right here the fifth one. Do reread your text before sending. So by taking the time to review messages, it suggests individuals can avoid mistakes and demonstrate care for the person they are communicating with. And this practice aligns with the idea of preventing miscommunications or unintended errors that may arise due to autocorrect features. So before you really send your SMS, you have to read it. You have to review. And number six, don't send too many attachments, especially if it's irrelevant. So you should not flood the person with those irrelevant and necessary attachment. If it is not some if it has um, not something to do with the person. The recommendation is you have to be mindful of the recipient's interests and not flood them with excessive or potentially inappropriate content. And we have right here the seven. Don't forget to double check the recipient. So because if you're going to send your email or I mean your SMS the wrong person, that would put you in awkward situation. And by double checking the recipient, it would prevent potential misunderstandings. It ensures that the message are directed to the intended recipients. Eight is you have to use proper grammar. We all know that some of our friends, family might not know about the latest texting abbreviation. So it's better if you could use the correct spelling and punctuation or grammar on specific um, words because not everyone is very knowledgeable about those late, uh, latest texting style. So the advice is to use proper grammar in text messages. And, and we have right here, ninth, don't text too early or late. So this advice suggests avoiding texting too early or late. You have to take into consideration that some people use their cell phone as an alarm clock or have notification tones for received texts. So the general guideline or let us say a rule is 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. But if you really know the person well that he stays um, awake um, after 9 p.m., then you can go ahead and text that person. But it would be better if you could have this etiquette to really follow that rule. It's like you're respecting their sleep and personal time. So that would make you a considerate and courteous person. And also, the last one, don't text while driving ever. So it's common sense that if you were texting while driving, that would really put you in danger. And we all know that would distract you if you were a driver. So this safety-oriented approach prioritizes responsible and focused driving. So don't ever 
um, do texting while driving if it really needs your response then you have to make sure that you stop driving first you go to the uh, safe side of the road then that's the time that you can respond to the SMS that you receive and also it's very important that we know the security classifications of documents we have here top secret confidential matter secret matter and restricted so just a brief explanation of this uh, classification of documents when we say top secret um, it would cause exceptionally grave damage to the nation whereas when we say a secret matter this are documents wherein it will just endanger national security or it can just cause serious injury to the interests of a nation. Whereas, if you're just talking about confidential matter, it will not endanger the national security but would prejudicial to the interest of the nation. Whereas, the last one is restricted. So, when we say restricted matter, it will not endanger, it will not cause any grave damage to the nation but it just requires special attention. And next here are the margin rules. So the first page without the printed letterhead. So the type letterhead is usually 3 4 inches or 5 roller spaces from the edge of the paper. And for succeeding or second page, it's 1 and 1 4 inches or seven roller spaces from the top edge of the paper. So for top, yeah, this is the top. So those are the margins for top. And for left, the margin is one and one for inches or 15 bar spaces. And if you're talking about right margin, it's three fourth inches or seven bar spaces. And for bottom, that's one and one fourth inches or seven roller spaces. And also, in police report, it's very important that we know the skill of proofreading. So proofreading, it's a difficult skill to master, yet one cannot be overlooked. Yet one cannot be overlooked. So when proofreading a report, the focus should be on addressing and ensuring that the fundamental questions about the content are answered. So these are actually the basic questions that are answered that should be given special attention so whenever we would try to proofread um, a report so we have to ensure that we're able to answer this is the information in proper order are the correct crimes cited in the report are all crime elements articulated are the facts of a case correct is the report well organized is all necessary information included are things efficiently or too wordy? Are all conclusions supported by facts? Are there any gaps in logic? Are the names spelled correctly? So by doing this proofreading, um, we can say that we meticulously review the report. And we would somehow think that we have meet the highest standards of quality and effective um, way when it comes to doing the report. And also, we have to take note some proofreading mechanics. So, a report effectiveness and an officer's credibility can be damaged by a report with too many mechanical errors. So, when proofreading the reports, officers should look for this one. What's I have to look for any inappropriate use of nouns, pronouns, verbs. So, we have to also look for very vague or confusion confusing language so if we saw this one we have to correct it we have to be specific we have also to check if there are any incorrect or inappropriate use of words so if we found one we have to change it are there any gaps in logic or narrative flow so we simplify then are there any spelling errors so you correct it if there are any misspelled ones then we have to use the correct punctuation if you're if you're able to see any inappropriate ones and we have also to take a look on some of the terms or abbreviations that is used on police fire or EMS parlance. And also, we should not overuse of words such as that. So, these are some of the perforating mechanics that we should take note. 
and that's the end of the lesson if you have questions just feel free to ask me whenever we have our face-to-face -face class